Hey everyone, I'm Professor Leong. Today I'm going to talk about how to write a law school seminar paper and break down a 10-step process for writing a good paper. Almost everything that I say will apply not only to a law school seminar paper, but also to a law review note if that's something that's in your life right now. One big caveat, if your professor or the senior editors on your law review say something that is different from anything that I say in this video, of course you should listen to them rather than to me. So I have um, put together a PowerPoint that I'm also going to make available to you as a written reference. And let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, so again, we're talking about how to write a law school seminar paper or a law review note. And the two have some differences, but a lot of similarities. Step one is to pick a topic. There is a distinction um, that's very important between a topic and a thesis. So a topic is something that you're interested in and that you'd like to write about. A thesis is the argument that you're making about that topic. So you'll usually have a topic well before you have a thesis. Examples of topics would be something like, uh, you know, racial disparities in education. Maybe you're interested in that or race discrimination in the platform economy. Um, a thesis would be more like racial disparities in educational outcomes result from excessive discipline of students of color. So see how that's an argument or race discrimination in the platform economy results from the way online platforms are designed. Again, that's an argument. So this distinction between a topic and a thesis is very important. I would expect that you wouldn't have a thesis until you've actually done quite a bit of research, even if you have some intuitions going into the whole thing. I'll just add one other thing, which is that in my experience, a lot of student authors tend to pick a topic that is too big. Um, it's pretty unusual in my experience for a student to pick a topic that's too narrow. So keep that in mind as you're thinking about what you might enjoy um, researching in the process of writing your paper. Step two, check for preemption. So you should use um, Westlaw, Lexis, or another online database to see what other people have written about your topic. Here the library faculty can be really helpful to you. A lot of students worry about preemption and so I have a few suggestions. Um, write about something new in the world. Right, so if it's new in the world, nobody's said that much about it yet. Um, maybe there's a new technology, a new scientific discovery, um, some new study that just came out. New factual contexts often present new legal contexts. Another possibility is that if you take a unique approach to a recent case, it's unlikely that anybody else has written about it yet. So for example, if there's a Supreme Court case that is recent but not too recent, like maybe about five years old, maybe um, one interesting thing you could do is look at um, how lower courts are interpreting the decision or look at how the decision has played out in the real world. And then finally, if you want to, even if you want to write about a topic that a lot of people have written about, if you use a unique methodology, so maybe you want to interview people, maybe you want to read and code a set of cases and see what percentage of them satisfy certain criteria. Um, if you're putting new facts that you're discovering yourself into the world, then you're not going to be preempted. And so those are a few suggestions for easy ways to avoid preemption. You should also, um, at this point, start identifying and reading the relevant sources or the relevant literature. I suggest that you start by running very broad title searches on um, Westlaw or Lexis. I prefer Westlaw, and this is how I always get started, running very broad title searches, um, and then gradually narrowing your focus. Keep track of what you find, but don't spend more than, I would say, maximum five minutes skimming the introduction of each article just to see what other people have been writing about. So your initial goal is to find what I call the center of the universe. Usually there will be maybe three to five articles that everybody else is citing. Like if you write on this topic, you need to cite back to these articles. So identify those articles and read them first. Um, once you've identified these key articles, look through their footnotes. You want to read or at least skim everything that these authors have read and cited. And then finally, you should also look through the list of every article that has cited the primary article and determine, and sometimes you can just do this from the title, but determine whether it's a useful article for your project. The final thing I'll say about um, researching um, is that, um, you want to not limit your research to Westlaw and Lexis. So for example, you should also always run 
Um, Google searches related to your topic. There might be interesting recent developments that have not yet made it into the law review literature. If your topic has an interdisciplinary component, then you should look in relevant databases on Heine Online or other um, databases. The library faculty, again, are fantastic at helping you figure out which databases you should be using. Step four, get organized. So here are some ideas for organization. And I wanna emphasize that um, different people prefer different methods of organization. There's not one right way of doing any of this. So the most important thing is to find something that works for you personally. So I encourage you to experiment and find what works for you. Now, there are two key things to look for in a good organizational system. Can you capture ideas easily? So if you're reading an article, can you capture the central point um, in a way that's um, pretty concise and um, that isn't going to be something that you have to do that takes you away from the article for a long time. And then secondly, can you find things later? So if your um, organizational system doesn't do these two things, it's not a good system. You need to refine your system. If you can incorporate into your organizational system um, blue booking, the citation of every article that you read somewhere within your system, then you can cut and paste that citation into your paper or your law review note later on, and that can save a lot of time. Your future self will be grateful to your past self, and it's something, again, that I do that I really recommend. I also always create a brain dump of some kind within my system um, for thoughts I may have while I'm organizing that I don't want to follow up on right away or, um, you know, maybe a phrase that I think would be useful to include in the introduction, that kind of um, information. I just have a clearinghouse for it somewhere within my organizational system. I plan to talk more about the way I organize while I'm writing in a future video. And so if this is something that you're struggling with, um, stay tuned for that. Um, step five, develop your thesis. So now you're to the point where you should have not just a topic, but a thesis, something that you're going to argue, as I mentioned in step one. Again, I'll say more about developing your thesis in a future video, um, but you know that you have a good thesis when you can tell a non-lawyer what your paper is about in one sentence, and they get it. I mean, maybe they don't understand all the nuances, but they could tell somebody else, right? So can you explain the argument that you're going to be making in one sentence? And then can you explain um, what you're going to do to back up that argument in maybe two or three sentences? So if you can do that, if you can state your thesis in one sentence, then um, chances are better that it's a good thesis. The final thing I'll say is that you should expect to cycle through steps uh, three, um, researching, step four, organizing, and step five, developing your thesis. You should expect to cycle through those uh, three steps several times. Um, I would say countless times, a lot of times. Um, and that's a normal part of the process as well. So it's not like you're going to move through these 10 steps in a completely linear fashion. Uh, you're gonna be pausing at steps three, four, and five for quite a while. Step six, outline. So there are innumerable ways to organize a paper effectively. I'm just gonna put one possible structure out there because I think that this is something that, again, students really struggle with is the organizational part. Um, so one way you can organize a paper. So you should have an introduction, right, that lays out the basic argument, says your thesis somewhere, explains how the rest of the paper is going to be organized. And then your paper could go like this, part one. Here's the you know, factual or um, historical background on this issue. Um, part two, all of this research you've been doing, um, survey the relevant case law and or the scholarly literature. What exactly you say here will depend on what your project is. Um, but basically uh, the legal sources that your reader is going to want to be informed about from your article. 
step three includes your argument about the issue um, or you know your solution to the problem that you're addressing through legal means again um, the exact framing will depend on the project that you've chosen but um, this will be the real meat of your argument and so this section should have most of your original ideas as well as perhaps be the longest part of the paper in many instances and then in part four you can anticipate objections and counter arguments and explain why they're wrong explain why you're right um, and that's a nice way to um, kind of tie up loose ends in the paper and then a short conclusion and when i say a short conclusion i could mean a paragraph um, there are some conclusions that are very effective that are a few pages long others are very effective and they're a paragraph long um, so don't necessarily especially in legal writing expect the conclusion to be particularly long number seven write the thing um, so here's a few suggestions about um, the draft itself um, so for your first paper it's important not to start writing too early so if your outline still has holes in it like areas where you know you need to do some more research um, spend time there right like get everything really clear in your head if you can't state your thesis in a way that passes the one sentence test you need to spend some more time just with your ideas and I know that it can be stressful not to um, be moving forward on the actual product that you're going to be giving to your professor or to your editor, um, but things will actually go faster if you do more preparatory work. So the first tip about writing is don't start it too early. Um, you can actually write directly from your outline. If you've done a detailed outline, you can just revise it directly into prose. And if you footnoted your outline as you went along, that can be particularly helpful. And finally, as you write, this is inevitable, you're going to find some additional areas that you need to research, and that's okay. Um, this is normal, and just make sure that you budget time for this in the writing process. Finally, people can get really hung up on like blue booking the footnotes, um, especially because if this is your first paper, um, the footnotes are something that's kind of new. Uh, save it until last. Like don't be doing it as you go. Like that takes you away from thinking about the argument that you're making. Make sure to have something in the footnotes so that you don't just have an empty footnote that you have to fill in later. Um, but don't bother blue booking. A lot of the time my footnotes just have the author's name and a page number until literally the day I'm ready to send the article off. Stay motivated. Okay, so this will also be the topic of a future video, um, but here are a few suggestions for staying productive, which honestly is one of the most important skills you can develop in law school, right? Um, writing productively, even when you don't feel like it. I find that it helps to make a timeline with small goals. Sometimes when I'm working on a big project, such as a book, I will write out a small goal for every day for the month ahead. Now, if I have a very productive day and I find that I do today's goal and tomorrow's goal, that's great, now I'm ahead, right? But keep the goals um, bite-sized and try to do one of them every day. It also helps me to stay on task to pretend that I'm on a deadline. Um, so in other words, I'm a reporter, like some role playing here. I'm a reporter and I will give myself assignments like your editor needs 300 words on this by 2 p.m. and then I focus only on that task until my deadline. Um, when I feel unmotivated um, I give myself incentives for finishing a section. It can be something as simple as candy or a work break. Um, maybe it's, um, you know, you call a friend, you shop online, whatever it is that motivates you. Um, don't hesitate to give yourself some rewards if you're writing on a day when you're feeling particularly unproductive. I also like to use, um, in addition to creating incentives, I also like to use accountability partners. Pick a partner who will really hold you accountable. You want somebody who is going to hit their goals and make you feel bad if you don't hit your goals not somebody who will be fun to commiserate with when neither of you got your work done. And finally, um, every day, the last thing that you do when you stop writing is you write a note to yourself about the next thing you're going to do when you sit down to write. And what that does is it minimizes the startup time when you return to the paper. This is especially helpful if you think that it might be a few days or even a few weeks before you come back to the project. 
Okay, so you followed all the suggestions, you have a great draft. Um, seek input, and this is where you can turn a good paper into a really great paper is by being open-minded about feedback. So some suggestions when it comes to seeking input. Of course, talk to your professor or to your advisor on the law review, that one almost goes without saying. Ask people both in your class or on the law review or outside the class to read your draft. Um, so it helps to have people who know what the class is about, as well as people who just aren't familiar with that particular area of law. Um, in my classes, I recommend that you have at least two other people in the class and two people outside the class. Um, other law students in the school read your draft and give you feedback. Um, also, uh, make sure that you're um, having some non-lawyers read your draft. Um, even if they don't understand all of it, they'll be able to tell you whether they're getting the big picture idea, whether that's something that's popping out to them. And um, unless your project is really technical, which honestly most um, seminar papers and law review notes are not, having a layperson um, read your draft can be really valuable. It can also help you kind of declutter your language. So somebody who's a good writer but not a lawyer is the ideal audience in a lot of cases. Um, when you seek input, you will get a lot of advice. Don't take all of it. So, of course, you should respect and think about the advice that these people are being kind enough to take the time to give you. But if you try to take all the advice you get, um, you're going to be revising the paper for the rest of your life. And, um, you know, some advice is literally impossible to take all of it, right? It might be internally contradictory or it might undermine um, kind of the central idea of the paper or something like that. In many cases, there are ways of addressing a comment or um, a suggestion that you get that um, don't actually involve taking the advice. So you might, um, if somebody says something uh, that you should talk about in your paper and you don't think it's appropriate to talk about it, you can just drop one footnote and explain why the thing that they want you to talk about is actually beyond the scope of the paper. That's like a, a one footnote, maybe three sentence solution. And it's fine to do that, right? No paper can incorporate all of the advice that you receive. Having said that, you should take seriously the advice that you get and think about whether it's correct. Um, I like to apply what I call a presumption of correctness to advice that I get. And if I think about it and either I don't think it's correct or I just don't think that this is the right place to take that particular comment, then I'll find a way to work around it or it can help me strengthen the counter argument section of my paper. Okay, and finally, presentation. Um, don't underestimate the importance of arts and crafts, which is what I call um, those little details, the formatting at the end of the paper that affect the first impression of the people who are going to be reading it. So budget some time to format the paper professionally. And when I say format the paper professionally, what I mean is, um, you know, uh, add an abstract, add a table of contents, add headings, make sure that everything is formatted consistently. So for example, cut and pasted material that is still in the original Westlaw font, maybe with a page number that snuck in there by accident, that's not impressive. That does not make a good impression. And so you want to try to make the paper look as nice as the ideas inside of it actually are nice, right? Like you want to, you want to present your ideas in the way that they deserve. I have a standard law review template that I will make available to you. It'll be linked below this video. And this is the format in which most professors actually send out um, their articles to law reviews for publication. And um, again, depending on what your editors or what your professor has said, this is potentially also a good way to uh, submit your draft. Okay, so thank you for checking out this video, and I hope that it was helpful or at least gave you some new ideas. I will be elaborating on these topics in a series of short videos that I'll be putting on this YouTube channel. So if you'd like to watch them when I release them, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And finally, if you have questions, go ahead and email me. My contact information is below the video.